So you might know Agora as a video and audio SDK that it enables real-time engagement using video and audio and makes it really simple. But the truth is, it's a lot more than that. The biggest part about Agora is the Agora network, and that network is not limited to video and audio. It's limited to any sort of data. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover the other Agora package called Agora RTM, which is just signaling or messaging across the Agora network. We're going to basically create a live chat application where you can check what members are online. You could send a message to all the members or you could send a message to an individual member. So let's get into it. Before we get into the actual Agora code, let's go over the starter application code, which I'll admit isn't the simplest one I've ever had, but we want to keep the focus on what Agora can do and not necessarily the other application stuff. So we have a main screen with three functions, one to create the client, one to log in, and one to join channel. And the pages displays two text fields and a button for logging in. And this application is only going to hold one state object and that's the log controller. Take a look, this log controller just holds a list of strings. So it will hold all the logs that we add to it. And we have only one function where we could add the log to it. And then the screen, once you're logged in, there's three functions, one to check whether the user logged in, one to send an individual message, and then one to send a channel-wide message. And the UI here, I figured it'd be easier to just show you. It's just three rows where one, we can enter the user ID, check if the user's online, and that's what's done with a text field and outline button. And then two more things, send an individual message to appear, and then send a channel-wide message. And now below this is where we will listen to that state object, which contains just a list of all our logs. And we'll just display those in a simple little list down here. So now let's get into implementing Agora RTM. First things first, we're gonna to need to install the dependency called Agora RTM. And now we save that and we're ready to go. I think the best way to break this down is just to go function by function of the exact flow that the application would go in. So we first have to create the actual Agora client. So this client is your actual connection to the Agora network. And then we'll need another one called the Agora RTM channel. So the first one, the client connects to the network and the second one connects to the specific channel that you'd give it. So during the init state, we'll call this create client to actually set up the connection to the Agora network. And here you can actually create the instance of your application using the app ID that you get from the Agora console. Now this app ID for me is saved in this app ID file over here. You can get this app ID from the Agora console. And if you're not sure about the Agora console, watch either the video call or the live broadcast video, they'll cover it. Then this client has a callback for on message received. So whenever this specific client receives a message, that means it was a direct message, it means it wasn't a message to the specific channel, it was to the client. So that's what you call a peer message or I named it a private message and you'll receive some information, for example, the peer ID who actually sent you that message and then the actual message content. And notice we're just adding this log to that log controller so that we have access to that complete list of strings or the logs from our app throughout both screens, either in the main screen and the message screen. So next there's another callback called on connection state changed. So this returns you what state it was changed to and the reason for that state change. If you take a look at the real time messaging documentation, you can figure out what these state changes are. And we see that the number five means it is aborted. So we add a log that the connection state changed and for what reason it changed to. And then if that state is five, which means aborted, we want to log the client out. And of course we'll add a little log called log out so that we know whenever this session was ended. All right, so now we have our client created, we're ready to work with it. And we get to the main login screen where, like I told you before, we have a user ID that you can set yourself and then what channel you wanna join. So you're connected to the Agora network. Now you need to connect to this specific channel. And then you wanna enter a unique user ID so that you know which user is which and you can manage the users and what happens between them and things like that. So the next step is to log this user in after they click it. So they have the outline button, which calls the login function, which we have over here. So first we check that the user ID is not empty so that the user actually entered something for their UID. And then, Relatively simple, you just do client.login and then you pass a token. For us, we don't have a token for this app. 
I talked about tokens in the live broadcast video if you want to take a look. And then we pass the user ID. We retrieve the user ID from the user ID controller. Pass the login, and we can create a little log that says successful login for this specific user. And once we're logged in, we can join the channel. So what do we have so far? We have the Agora client initialized and everything is good to go. We have the user connected to it. Now we want to join a specific channel with it. Hi, I'm recording a video now. So creating the channel requires a little bit more work. You remember we created this RTM channel object. We need to initialize that in a similar way which we initialize the client. We're gonna outsource that to a separate function just to keep things a little bit cleaner. We're gonna have a create channel function where we're gonna pass the channel ID that we wanna create. We're gonna join that specific channel and then create a nice little log saying, we successfully joined that channel. Now for this create channel function, I just figured I'd speed things up a little bit. We're going to be returning a channel object because we wanna set it to our local channel that we defined at the very beginning. So we'll create a channel on that client using the name that we passed in. Remember we pass in the channel ID that we type in ourselves. And this one, we have three callbacks that we'll set on it. So we have member joined, member left, and on message received. So this on message received means it was sent to the whole channel. So this is a public message or a channel wide message. So then we'll add a log called public message from the specific user. And this is what the text says. And then on member joined and on member left is pretty self-explanatory. It just gives you information about who left and who joined the channel. And then we return that channel, store in our local channel that we defined up here, and we're good to go. So that's pretty much it on the main screen. Now we're gonna go to the message screen and we're gonna add two properties for it. We wanna pass it the client and the channel because we're gonna be doing actions upon both of these from there as well. So now we should be able to successfully join that channel, Tadis, and let's say channel Tadis as well. Log in, we should see Connection state changed to two because of this reason. And we got a login successful from Tadis. If you want to know what those reasons are, so connection state two means that we were connecting and connected is state three. So we changed from connecting to connected. And the reason was because we were logging in. And then the second reason was login was successful. So there we go, we're connected. But you'll see if we type any messages, even channel wide messages, we won't see anything or we will see a message that I should have removed, but you can see this just tries to send a message to a log, and even though there's no message being sent, it still says success, but what this probably shouldn't be here, as you see, it doesn't try to send anything, it just puts out a log, but hopefully you understand there's no message being sent here. So then I think we can go in order again by each function. So this is user online function. You see right now I have a basic result that says user not online. If we check if user's online, We'll say, all right, please input something. See if the user Agora is online. User not online because we're just returning a static this. But if we instead ask the client to query for whether this peer is online or not, and we pass in the text editing controller text from, from this main field. So in this case, the Agora text, we check if the Agora person is online. We'll get false. Now let me log into a separate phone. So now I'm logged in with my iPhone. I'm gonna try some screen recording and some crazy editing to put it onto the screen, but we'll have a user ID of Agora and we'll join the Tadish channel, if I remember correctly. So we were able to join. If we check, we'll see a member named Agora joined this channel. Now if we query again, we'll see the Agora result is true. So this user named Agora is on that specific channel. So next we have sending a specific message to a peer. So this is where we had that log I should have removed, but we, we actually need to send the message before we send that log. So we need to create this object called Agora RTM message. We'll create this object using the name constructor from text where we pass in the specific peer message. So if you remember the peer to peer messages go to the specific client and then the channel wide messages go to the channel. So since this is a peer message, we go to the other peer specific client. So we have the Agora user. I want to send a message, say, hey, from Tadis, and send to peer. Message sent successfully. Now on this, you should see private message from Tadis, hey, from Tadis. All right, now the last step is sending a channel-wide message. 
So again, we're adding this log without doing anything, but it's quite easy to do something with it. So widget.channel.send message. And instead of writing it out all neatly like we did up here, it will just put it all into one thing and instead take the channel message text from here. So now if we send out this public message from Tadis to everybody on the channel. We see a channel message sent successfully. And then here we get public message from Tadis. So this is super powerful. For this example, we're sending messages on this specific channel, but we're just doing that as a form to show you what it's capable of. You can send literally anything you want on this channel. And then when we pair it with audio and video calls, you get a lot more control. So whether it's having people request to join before they actually join the channel and the main host has to approve it, whether it's to count how many users are in the call, things like that, whether you want to have a little chat message screen within your video call, the options are limitless with this. So let me quickly run through exactly what we did here. So first things first, we added the Agora RTM package. And then in the main screen, we created a client that connects to the actual Agora application. And then whenever the person clicks the login button, we connect that user to the specific Agora client. And after they're connected, we have them join the specific channel that they requested to join. Throughout this whole process, we're putting out all the logs for them. And then within the channel, we have three main functions. We can check whether a user is online. We can send a message to a specific user, or we can send a public message to the whole channel. So this is the Agora RTM package. Like I said, you can pair it together with video calls, audio calls to make it even more advanced or custom experience for your users. And with this package, you pretty much don't have any barriers for real-time engagement. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for watching.